During the growing demonstrations in Minneapolis over the killing of a man shown in an extensively shared video, a Target store was looted. Tensions increased and the protests became more violent as the second day of the demonstrations progressed. The throng flocked to the intended retailer, taking advantage of the moment to plunder and steal as much as they could. People with their stolen goods came and went from the store, turning the once organized area into complete chaos. Surveillance footage showed a 42-year-old woman disabling an employee with a chili sauce filled spray bottle in order to take gold change from an Adelaide business. She pretended to be blind during her first visit, donning a wig and using a cane to fix an earring. She feigned not to be blind on her second visit, saying she would want to see the stock. On her third visit, she deftly sprayed the worker's eyes with chili sauce, took off with a bunch of gold chains, and ran away. I stepped back a bit and I thought, oh my god, my jewelry, I remember, and she's grabbed and running out. I cannot open my eyes and I really sting and burn. Really want to catch her to get back all my jewelry. My wife says, hey, is uh, someone wrong? And I know that it's... That it must be 100% that lady. When I uh, get her and she fell down, she used the taser to try to hurt me, and I just just take from her. A lot of people in the street too, mm -hmm. and they just uh, pick some for me. I don't know, like, it's maybe someone they take. The majority of the jewelry was recovered by the victim's husband, but she managed to flee until the police apprehended her. She is currently being charged with possessing a prohibited firearm and aggravated robbery. In the Philly Isles, under the bright glare of security cameras, a man furtively crammed merchandise into his bag. Undeterred by watchful eyes, he filled his loot to the brim before strolling past the checkout, a thief unchallenged. <laughs> wow, rack it up. I need my cell phone. Does he work here? He must work here. Five nine seven. Yeah, he must work here, right? <laughs> Yo. What are you doing? He's racking up. <laughs> Five minutes later, the security shows up. <laughs> and now the cop shows up. What are they gonna do? That guy's long gone. <laughs> By the time sirens wailed in the distance, his face had vanished into the city's maze, leaving behind the echoes of unanswered alarms and the silent shock of witnesses. In Seattle, two people broke into the garage of an apartment complex and stole a motorcycle. They came in a pickup truck, saw a locked motorcycle, and decided not to bother opening it. Rather, they quickly placed the bike onto the truck's bed and drove off. You won't believe the stupidity of this lady, who attempted to pump gas but is oblivious to the fact it's too cold outside. What does she do? She tries to use a lighter to defrost the pump handle. It's unknown what transpired next as the person filming drove away, which is a smart move in my book. It's just a normal day at a gas station before the car on the left drives with the pumps still in the car. 
The car came to a halt when the gasoline pump was pulled along. What an idiot. It was the first, and hopefully, the last time this woman pumps gas. The gasoline spills non-stop, and she doesn't know how to handle it. Oh my god, what do I do? <laughs> Nicole! Nicole! You need to put that back in! What do I do? It's not stopping! <laughs> I, I don't... What do I... Guess there's always a first time for everything. A woman was caught in a deceitful shopping act in a clothing store, strolling around with a drink in her hand and a trolley. She had no idea that cameras had been recording her as she covertly tucked many outfits inside her trousers. Her attempt to steal was short-lived, and she and her accomplice were quickly taken into custody by sheriff's deputies as they were leaving. Sheriff's off, stop! What are you doing? Are you with that car over there? You don't have anything, uh, any weapons, anything like that? Mm -mm. I'm gonna take your bag off you right here. Can you watch your head? What? Hold on, right there's good. Right there's good. She's got all kinds of stuff concealed in her pants still. <laughs> Want me to go over there right now with him and go talk to the camera? Okay, we got to start doing uh, this. Yeah. The woman was arrested and accused of stealing when a female officer was called to retrieve the hidden objects from her jeans. About 200 people storm into this shuttered Walmart in this security footage, smashing the glass entrance in their haste to get inside. Chaos naturally ensues. They head straight for the most costly items in the store, the electronics section. We believe at least 200 storm into the Walmart and the majority of them headed straight to the electronics section. So the most expensive items in the store is what they were after. With a specific goal in mind, TVs are taken and cash registers are the center of attention. The result was an estimated $16,000 in merchandise and damages. Approximately $116,000 worth of merchandise uh, and damage was reported from Walmart. Tampa 911, what is the address of your emergency? Uh, we're getting break, breaked into CVS on 30th and Fowler, right? They're trying to get into the fashion superstore to your E. At the end of the day, I, I don't think most people appreciate what happened to their city. And uh, you can see that with the number of tips that are coming in. I think they feel invincible at this point or that, that they're not going to be caught. If you were there, if you were doing wrongdoing, we're coming for you. Investigators painstakingly go through hours of film from security cameras and even cell phone recordings, leading to the recovery of stolen devices and clothes and several arrests. That's actually pretty impressive. A man bravely walked into the business wearing a wig and disguised himself. When he later reappeared without the disguise, he made a daring attack. He broke into display cases and quickly took pricey stuff before driving off in a silver BMW. January 2nd, early in the morning, a massive gathering for the street takeover. The mob then moves over to a nearby shop, focusing on Ruben's Bakery and a Mexican cuisine store. The mob rushes in and plunders the establishment after the driver of that white Kia backs up multiple times, destroying a security gate and effectively breaking in. The probe was sparked by tens of thousands of dollars in damage, from which the company is still recovering. The 13-year-old youngster is the driver of the white Kia, according to the sheriff. Along with this portion of the mob that barged in, four additional suspects were also taken into custody. 
They could be in their early 20s or late teens. After being brought in, the juvenile is promptly returned to his parents' care. About a week and a half ago, the Compton County Sheriff's entered the 7-Eleven during a heist. Police arrested one of the individuals present, and that was the same 13-year-old minor. I get you. It may take a couple of days. You may get cocky and think I'm going to commit another crime. We're going to get you. Uh, we owe it to our community, and we absolutely owe it to our businesses uh, that they can depend on us when people do these kind of crimes. According to Mr. Ramirez, the proprietor of the family-run company, the business is currently operating at 70% capacity. I have a nephew that's 13, and I can't imagine him doing anything like that. And it's just, it's, that's horrible. I mean, where are the parents at, you know? I mean, they have, people have to be held accountable. And at 13, I don't know, how do you, how do, you do that, you know? They are still awaiting funding from insurance. And as he mentioned, his family has been there for 48 years and plans to stay for an additional 48. He does, however, express his gratitude for the men and women of the Sheriff's Department for their hard work over the past few weeks in solving this case and making the arrests thus far. Video footage captured a brazen trio of robbers taking product bags from an East Los Angeles Nike store. This egregious conduct happened the day after a nearby Nordstrom misplaced more than $300,000 worth of merchandise. One man and two women can be seen entering the Nike store on Sunday in the afternoon, which has gone viral on social media. Unfazed by store employees and other customers, they grab whatever they can carry with abandon. One suspect sticks out in the video, toting a big garbage bag filled to the brim with shoe boxes. This person calmly repacks the boxes after the sack bursts open, then strolls out of the store with accomplices. I'm in shock. Look, what? Oh my good loving. I'm in shock. They young as hell. They got trash bags in their pockets. They really taking the whole store in the security. Why, why the worker looking why? at them? Only in the Nike store in Watts will the kids come in and rob, and they don't do absolutely nothing. Police reports indicate that items such as luggage and shoes are among the stolen treasures, which is valued at approximately $1,000. A daring heist took place in broad daylight in a New York shoe store. People poured into the store, confidently taking stuff and leaving as if it were free. This is how the scene played out. Sweetheart, is this your car? Did you leave your car to go get some sneakers? What did you get? At least show me what you got. Show me what you got since you, since you left your car. Hold on, let's see. Let's see what you got here. Let's see. Let's see what you got. You left your car in traffic, ma. You got right? Come on, my damn, the pregnant shit got right. They going to get them Team Jordans right now. Niggas ain't playing. Niggas got Tim's out here. She going back. She ain't playing. She going back. Oh, oh my This shit looks sweet. They were unaffected, even by being videotaped. They continue their blatant behavior. Body cam footage of cops handcuffing a nine-year-old youngster inside his own classroom for 13 minutes has outraged many in Central Florida. The event took place at an elementary school on February 2nd of last year. Two police officers were dispatched to Stenstrom Elementary School in response to an unruly child, per the incident report. As staff members tried to calm the child down, you can see the child flinging books and paper that have been thrown across the floor on the officer's body cam. Officer Moncada then makes an attempt to speak to the pupil in an attempt to defuse the situation, but the nine-year-old responds by hitting him and using foul language. That's okay. I get that a lot. It doesn't hurt my feelings. The student is still lashing out, this time kicking the teacher while staff personnel are holding a blue punching bag. Officer Scott Mosley then arrives in the classroom as the student is still hurling objects. 
such as a wet floor sign, all over the place. Officer Mosley handcuffs the student a few moments later. The incident report states that the officer did this out of concern for the other people in the room. So you come down. This is where we're at. He can do that because he's on the road. Just calm me down for a second. The youngster can be seen repeatedly kicking the officer as they try to subdue him on Officer Mosley's body cam. The student keeps screaming profanities while being placed in handcuffs. Stop it. Sit up. Chill. Chill. Just relax a little bit. The child's wrists were lightly cuffed in the handcuffs, but they prevented the child's hands from being free, according to police reports. The young person can be seen attempting to remove the handcuffs from himself. In the incident report, Officer Mosley is seen holding the child's arms. Officer Moncada keeps urging the student to settle down so he can be released from the handcuffs a few minutes later. Oh. You're throwing things. You're putting everyone Shut in up. Shut up. You need to hear it. Ew. It's okay, I get that a lot. Oh, We're trying to figure out why you're so upset. Ow. Stop pulling. Stop! Stop pulling. Ow. Stop picking at my hand. but you can go to jail for things like that. And I don't want to see you go to jail for things like that, okay? You can get, you can get in trouble for hitting staff, too. Okay, I've done it since pre -K. That's not nice. Why do you do those things? Because you teach them. But why? They're only trying to teach you. Okay. But we want to get you off those cuffs, so... I mean, you're trying to get off the cuffs. We can easily open them if you just comply and talk to everybody to see what's going on with you while you're having a rough morning. You're Let's trying really that. hard to take those cuffs off, and we want to take it off. Trust me. Really? We just want to make sure everybody's safe. So All can right. you talk to us? Officer Mosley releases the student from his shackles after the teacher is seen talking to him gently and seems to calm the child down. Thanks, bud. Good job, buddy. Shortly after that, according to police, they got the pupil to visit the guidance counselor's office. The city and police department are currently being sued by the child's parents. Local media state that the student's parents sued the two participating cops at the end of September, claiming that the entire ordeal severely injured the boy and exacerbated his pre-existing behavioral disorder. The family's attorney, who filed the complaint, also made a statement to the local media sites, saying that police officers shouldn't arrest nine-year-old students at school and that the city neglected to contact the family or attempt to rectify the regrettable circumstance. Two people broke into a vape and tobacco shop on Smith Street in the heart of downtown Vancouver just before 10 in the morning. One of the men flashed a big knife, forcing the store manager to open the till and give up the cash inside, taking him by surprise. And they threatened me that uh, if I don't follow them, they will, he will stab me. So he threatened me to open the till and lay down on the ground. The manager was then restrained and forced to lie on his hands with his head buried in the ground. The other suspect stuffed things into a black Adidas duffel bag. 
shock. Uh, it was all of the sudden. Like the situation from last five months is getting very worse. Like it's been like four times break-ins and this is this kind of incident never happened before with a weapon they put somebody's life in danger they put the knife on someone and the worst thing is is the broad daylight the people outside this is this is it's a busy street but they don't hesitate to do that the manager was so terrified that he quickly called the police as the two suspects left the store after finishing their heinous conduct more than seven thousand dollars worth of goods and cash were taken in the heist i've been like traumatized from that movie I'm not feeling safe here, like, they say it's a better life here, but, you know, what if we are not safe? The store manager is naturally afraid for his safety after the incident, even though he was luckily not physically harmed. Three armed and mask-wearing men stormed into Plaza Jewelers, demanding cash and jewels from everyone inside in a terrifying incident, when the proprietor of the store suddenly fired a shot that just missed the suspects, sending them running from the scene. Their plans took an unexpected turn. My husband see the guy point to us, my husband shoot. It's a lot of, a lot of crazy people on the street. Nothing happened. Everybody is fine. I feel grateful, but I'm nervous. Nobody got hurt, thank God. Interestingly, none of the men in the masks returned fire, opting instead to flee quickly. The same thing occurred at a jewelry store and Tamforin Mall in San Bruno just one week before this occurrence. By pointing a gun at the suspects and brandishing it, the shop owner prevented an armed robbery by defusing the situation without drawing his weapon. On September 14th, authorities said a man was detained for child neglect at a Walmart in Florida. Witnesses reported seeing two kids strolling around the parking lot wearing just diapers. Out of the vehicle and uh, they're half naked. Which vehicle? This one right here. Looks like you got him dressed. Awesome. I tried to check on him, ask him if he needed medical attention. He's rolling out of his mouth. Eyes rolling in the back of his head. Yeah, I'm in contact. Sir! There's a straw in his pocket as well. The father, 35-year-old DeJorn Killenbeck, was found unconscious inside a running vehicle, according to the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. Hey, wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Hey! What are you doing? Hey. Step out! Step out! Step out! Step out! Step out! Where are your kids at? My kids. You got some kids? No. No? They're not his kids? Step out. The baby told him Step over. Who else you have in the car with you? Uh, Who else was in the car with you? Yeah. What happened? Listen to what I just asked you. You know who I am? Yeah. Do you remember me? Yeah. All right. Who else is in the car with you? That girl. Okay. And her kids, right? Yeah. Okay. Where's the girl at? I'm not in no trouble, right? We're determining that. We gotta find mom. The kids in there? They have the kids, yep. Are the kids in there? No, the kids are not in your car. They got out of your car. No, they weren't with mom. They were with you. Okay? So I'm figuring it out. I thought you said they were sitting in another deputy. No, they went with Walmart staff after they ran in the parking lot in nothing but a diaper while you were sleeping at the steering wheel, right? So for now, what's your anybody about? It? Following his arrest, Killenbeck is being prosecuted on several counts, including two counts of child neglect. Metro PCS in Ensley was targeted by three masked and armed individuals. They went inside and started threatening a customer and a staff member. They looked everywhere, but they found no money. They had to quickly leave when the alarm began to sound.
Raven Hall on Melbourne's west side, two males are seen on camera stealing into a store. The robbers forced a stolen car through the front door despite the establishment having numerous security measures in place, including a gate, rolling door, alarms, and security cameras. They succeeded in stealing three high-performance custom vehicle engines, totaling $160,000. Obviously, it's someone that has been in here before. The offenders knew what they were, they were looking for and uh, they went straight to that back room in excess of $160,000. Really hard, I just felt numb. The Nissan Skyline, GDR only, and the other one into a Mitsubishi E. The robbers left behind damaged automobiles at the facility after loading the engines into two getaway vehicles. A suspect is seen in a recently circulated video purportedly holding a Walmart employee hostage before being shot and killed by police. The incident took place in Richland, Mississippi on December 21st. According to police, the worker was held captive by the suspect, who was later identified as 21-year-old Corlunda McGinnister. On camera, McGinnister is seen gripping onto the worker with one hand while brandishing a gun with the other. McGinnister told Mississippi police that she wanted to talk to a news anchor and that she needed assistance. As the person behind the camera requests that the employee be released, McGinnister is seen on video recognizing that she is being filmed. Hey. Why don't you let her go then, please? Hey, no. You're not doing it. Quick, At around 5.45 p.m. that evening, according to the Mississippi Bureau of Investigations, McGinnister was shot by police and killed. The inquiry being carried out by the agency will eventually be turned over to the Office of the Mississippi Attorney General. Three robbers targeted the Metro PCS store on Cleveland's east side. They repeatedly passed in front of the store, and each time, the man behind the counter spotted them and realized there was a threat. He put his hand on his weapon. Sensing that there could be danger, the person behind the counter thought it foolish for one of the people approaching the counter with his weapon drawn to use it. Rather, he made the decision to get up. After stuffing mobile phones into their bags, the burglars made a hasty escape from the store on foot. I was like, he's like, give me, he's like, I need it. I was like, man, just take whatever you want. I'm gonna keep it real. I was gonna blast them. All three of them. I had the perfect shot. My pistol got a beam on it. I'm not gonna miss. And the one with the, the biggest chicken ran away when he see me coming after him. The authorities are actively looking for these individuals in order to bring these people to justice after compiling the information from the surveillance footage. In Queens, New York, two men boldly attack an ATM machine while it was dark outside. They took advantage of a van, fastening a chain from the rear of the vehicle to the ATM, and drove off, yanking the entire machine from the wall. They quickly fled after loading the ATM into a vehicle in less than 60 seconds. He saw everything, called the police, and the police showed up fairly quickly, but uh, they, they missed each other by like 30 seconds. Well, then it was cemented, there was rods going inside the stone and everything, that they got it out. You put an ATM to kind of help the you know, customers, to help the general public convenience-wise, but it's not worth it. The actual quantity of money in the machine is still unknown, but the theft shows how bold the burglars were. The value of the stolen ATM alone is estimated to be $2,500. These two workers were robbed at gunpoint as their shift was almost over. This small store on Catella Avenue next to the 5 Freeway in Anaheim is where it happened. Check out the interior surveillance footage. Images of the two suspects entering early this morning are displayed. The suspects, who are both wearing dark blue hoodies and facial coverings, begin obdurately demanding cash from two registers and the safe behind the counter when the second man swiftly points a weapon at the cashier behind the counter. The cashier obeys and follows the men's instructions, clearly disturbed. As piles of cash are being taken from the cash register by the two suspects, you will witness a second employee being brought behind the counter and held at gunpoint while being yelled at to keep their hands up. Less than a mile from Disneyland, we observe Anaheim detectives working inside the Magic Land liquor store overnight, gathering evidence and watching security tape that appeared to show the two suspects carrying out the crime. Luckily, no guns were shot, no one was hurt, and it didn't seem like any customers were inside the booze shop when the heist occurred. 
Three unidentified individuals entered Metro PCS in Houston, Texas on Saturday, June 8, 2019. The workers cooperated with the suspects' demands to open the safe and empty the registers of cash. Additionally, the suspects went through the workers' pockets, grabbing anything they discovered. The third suspect stood guard at the door during the heist, keeping patrons from fleeing. The suspects left the area in an unidentified way after taking money from the registers and the victim's personal belongings. One of the states with the highest rates of vehicle-related property theft is California. This Irving video demonstrates how fast burglars can act when a car is left alone. In this instance, a suspect pulled up to a Chevron and started observing the vehicles as they filled up. Upon noticing that one of the cars was unlocked, the man took a bag that contained a pricey Fuji camera from the front seat. The theft occurred during the day, and the robber hurried off with his loot in a matter of seconds. Once inside the store, the man started tucking things down his jeans. Once his performance was over, he tried to walk out nonchalantly without paying. He was shocked to learn that the security personnel were keeping an eye on him via the webcam, though. After they caught him and recovered all the stolen goods, they led him away. Two armed men targeted the Maple Valley Cannabis Store, Gooby Doobies, during the day. With haste, they shut the door and dragged everyone into the restroom. They didn't bother to touch the cash register, instead concentrating on grabbing marijuana as one used a garbage bag to empty display cases. He had like a small garbage bag that he pulled out of his pocket and then filled up with the jars. When the guy ran in here and jumped the display case, he put both hands on the display case and they got some really good prints out of that. Wallets and car keys were snatched from startled but cooperative employees. Robbers made off in a customer's blue Honda, hauling thousands of dollars worth of pilfered goods. A suspect with tattoos was visible in security footage. Puts everything in the car and then he acts like he's gonna go run back inside for something. They took all of one brand, like they were targeting that brand. Um, 
and they got, I'd say maybe about 10 ounces. He may have a tattoo on his hand that I'm looking into. Almost like a Gucci or Louis Vuitton kind of checkered type pattern. Investigators collected fingerprints with the intention of apprehending the offenders. This is another instance from California. This time though, it's from a small Indian desert city. Images of a suspected intoxicated motorist who had just escaped from police are shown smashing into two gas station pumps, setting them on fire. Despite the enormous amount of damage to the gas station, the man and his dog arrived at the incident. The conditions were dire as evidenced by workers' cell phone footage from adjacent locations. An estimated $100,000 worth of damage was caused, and the 24-year-old motorist is currently facing numerous accusations, including causing harm to animals. Adrian Blanco's jewelry store was the target of two robbers. To gain entry, they turned off the store's electricity and hurled a rock at the front door. Blanco didn't see what was going on right away because there was no power, but he did receive a notification on his phone right away. And lo and behold, I turn on my camera and I see these two guys lurking outside my store. What was suspicious was the time, it was around 11 uh, p.m., and they're, they were covering their faces. This has been happening where the power gets shut down and uh, burglars are trying to see how soon you respond. This is the rock that they use from the break. They're not typically very pretty, so they're covered up by a lot of shrubbery, and a lot of times, sometimes it's just overgrown and it hasn't been cared for. So cutting back some of that shrubbery and exposing the box area. Fortunately, the iron gate placed between the glass door prevented the robbers from taking anything. Over the course of a six-day binge, Two criminals pretended to be regular customers at two different Metro PCS locations in order to target them. They carefully investigated every site before planning their robberies, getting bolder and bolder with everyone. Armed, their confidence in their criminality increased. It needs to be addressed because they're putting kids' life in danger, so our life in danger. They wear goatees. One of them is a big guy. The other one's a skinny guy. He kind of has a limp. That one guy wears a hat with an F on it. He's wore it twice. Their violent behavior intensified during one of the robberies when they tried to take a necklace from an employee by force. The last robbery, they did get physical with one of our employees. They tried to yank her um, necklace and it didn't come off. And once the guy saw it didn't come off, he started getting frustrated. And he told her that uh, if he didn't take it off, he was gonna beat the out of her. When the necklace refused to cooperate, the irate thief turned to menacing threats, threatening to use violence if it wasn't removed voluntarily. A guy went into his store and spent a long time pacing down the aisles. He initially paid for the items at the counter, but as he was leaving, he snatched another without paying for it. He had no idea that the security personnel had captured his actions on camera and had quickly taken him into custody as he was leaving the business. It's unthinkable for Armani Huela to abandon his newborn kid, yet that is precisely what police claim someone did last week, leaving a three-month-old child behind after being discovered shoplifting at a Philadelphia Mills Walmart. Why would you leave your kid? You know, that's like part of you. It's more important than like your keys, you know? According to reports, it all began at approximately 11 p.m. on a Thursday night. Two guys and a lady were confronted by security for shoplifting. The suspects took off running. At that point, security personnel discovered a three-month-old infant girl had been abandoned. Oh my God, really? I'm speechless. I, I can't imagine doing that. It's an instinct, you know? Right away, you, don't, you never leave your baby. After being brought to Jefferson Torresdale Hospital, the infant's condition was reported to be good. As police search for the adults who abandoned the infant while attempting to elude security guards, investigators say the child is currently with her mother. The Special Victims Unit is now in charge of the case. It's a crime. They should be arrested and put in jail. 
that poor baby. Brittany Fife, who also has a young daughter, finds it incredible that parents are among the many customers at the store and that the aisles where they shop are the same aisles where the baby was abandoned. Oh, I love her more than anything. That's why I can't, I can't imagine somebody doing that. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Now that they are conducting interviews, investigators anticipate issuing arrest warrants. At four in the morning, a man in Wicker Park was filling up his automobile when a bunch of men approached him and started viciously beating him. The man entered the petrol station in the first scene of the video, barely noticing the several cars that are pulling in behind him. One of the men daringly gets into the driver's seat as the three cars begin to circle the pump. One of the man's accomplices approaches the victim as he tries to approach him, strikes him from behind, and takes his car. Fortunately, the victim is able to flag down the police officer who passes by a moment later. Even though the vehicle was returned right away after it was discovered running only four blocks away, the carjackers escaped capture. Three people made an attempt to leave the business without paying for their purchases, and one of them even tried to steal money. They were surprised to find police waiting for them, though. They were arrested by the police as they were leaving, and they were charged with theft. Hey, Jim, watch for that female. Looks like we have someone else possibly leaving with a generator and some flowers. Anybody get eyes on that? There's a guy running out right now. Get him, he's out. I got him, he's running. He's in the parking lot towards 41. Stop! Shirt's office! Stop! Stop! I'm gonna tase you! I'm gonna tase you! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! I wasn't going in there, sir! People always seem to be so surprised when police are waiting. Zokar and Tamerlan Sarnev, two brothers from Chechnya, detonated pressure cooker bombs near the Boston Marathon finish line on April 15, 2013. The Boston Marathon bombing will be the name given to the terrorist attack. On that day, 281 people were left with varying degrees of injury and three people lost their lives. The brothers killed an MIT officer three days after that horrific act was committed at the school's campus, having failed in their efforts to take his service firearm. They went on from there. After that, they went to Austin and carjacked Dung Meng. See them pull into a gas station in the SUV that was stolen. They are in there with the victim. Tamerlan exits the vehicle and enters the convenience shop. While strolling, he picks up a pack of chips, which he opens right away without making a purchase. Dung Meng seizes a little window of opportunity while Tamerlan savors his chips. See how he flings open the back door and takes off running. After exiting the vehicle, Zokar goes into the shop and looks for Tamerlan. He observes that Tamerlan nearly exits the shop in a rush before coming back to pick up the items he didn't pay for. He even held up a hand in apology. Dung Meng hides out at 816 Memorial Drive at another store. Running to the back to hide, he shuts the door behind him and hurriedly tells the attendant that he's in danger. As he makes motions and attempts to show the attendant where the SUV is, he can sense his tears. The store worker called 911 right away. Although he doesn't fully get the narrative, he is aware enough to notify the police. 911 recorded line. Which Hello, how are you, sir? Your emergency? Yeah, uh, I am uh, in mobile gas station, uh, 816 Memorial Drive. Any I have one, uh, number, some 816 M M Memorial Drive. Correct. Any? Is there any apartment number, sir? No, 816. I understand 816 Memorial Drive. Is yeah, there a floor station, or a mobile, mobile gas station. The mobile gas station. Yeah. I have one uh, came inside now and he told me some uh, one uh, want to, to shoot him and he stay inside and he want to leave. While dispatch is already en route, listen in as the operator converses with the man. Meng's voice is erratic and disorganized. Now that you can hear the vibrations in his voice, you can also feel his terror. This happened to me, this happened to me. Sir. Someone took to my car. They took and they want to shoot yeah. my car down. Sir. Sure. Sir, hello? Sir, listen to me. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Sure. You can finally breathe as the police show up, and you see Meng put his hands on his chest in relief. While Zokar was apprehended, charged, and given the death penalty for his various crimes, Tamerlan was killed in the manhunt. You notice two suspects coming into the store and going behind the counter. They are both wearing hoodies. 
They are visible as they search for more products and steal money from the register. It appears that two workers from two were present as the suspects left the store. You can see them both raising their hands in the air. One of the hooded individuals, according to Anaheim police, was pointing a gun at the store clerk. This occurred at Magic Land Market on East Catella Avenue just before 1.30 in the morning. It's unknown how much cash was taken or whether anyone was hurt. There have been no takedowns. A clearly defined goal was shown on camera as the individual, wearing a hood and mask, entered the store and picked up a beer. The offender pretended to be waiting to pay while another client was seated at the counter, but he quickly left with two cases of beer before paying his bill. People really love stealing beer. A petrol station was the target of a persistent thief in an odd series of incidents. On his first effort, armed with a squeegee, he cracked the front glass door with ease. He was planning to steal from the cash register, but he was going to have a hard time as the door was closed. He took some goodies like beef jerky and left the store unfazed. Reluctant to lose, he came back 10 minutes later with plan B, a boulder in hand to smash down the door. Once more, the locked door foiled his attempt. Unfazed, he left and returned with a start, breaking a display case with a squeegee. This time, before leaving with his loot, he swiped electronics like a wireless charging pad, a taser, a box of headphones, an electronic smoking device, and a Bluetooth earpiece. A guy and a woman first pretended to be customers as they entered a Garden Grove T-Mobile store in broad daylight. But when the man quickly tore an iPhone off the wall and surged violently at the cashier, their plans took a sinister turn. The woman tried to grab a Samsung phone off the display counter at the same time, and when that didn't work, she took out a wire cutter from her pocket. And I'm a girl, and I'm, I'm I just scared. Everywhere you go, you feel like, is something gonna happen? This corner pretty much very like deep in the plaza, so it's not safe in this area. The man took a knife out of his pocket and pointed it at the clerk, which infuriated the clerk even more. The clerk even tried to defend the phones. The clerk fell back, scared for his life, and quickly dialed 911. That's a really strong cable, but they have like strong scissors or something. They cut it off. I just try to stop them. If I'm not calling police, this will be happening again. The woman secured phones while she kept cutting cords. The man stole two iPhones and tore the counter off the wall. Before the cops arrived, they made a quick run and took four phones in total, worth close to $4,000. A possible shoplifter was discovered nearby who fit the description of the suspect. There were several warrants for this specific individual. Get on the floor! These shoplifters frequently committed organized crimes and are repeat offenders. Police made this footage from Wheat Ridge's Ulta shop available last year. Wheat Ridge, though, claims they're on it. Finding that people are selling this stuff off Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for markup prices. And so uh, criminals are getting smarter. They're realizing that there is money to be had. Perhaps you're wondering, why should I care? According to police, going ahead, they also intend to take a more proactive approach. We're on to you here in Wheat Ridge. We've set up some bigger scale operations, partnering with some of these stores and their loss prevention teams to basically monitor some of the surveillance in real time. They will visit targeted establishments and increase their visibility in the community. And at the end of the day, when, when they lose products off the shelves, they're not getting compensated for it. It impacts their bottom line. It negatively impacts that business. And so we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to uplift the businesses here and making sure that we are holding the people accountable. Three robbers, one of them wielding a weapon, broke into the one-off design apparel store in Queens, New York City. Danny Tolentino, the sales representative, was directed to the back of the store. In only minutes, the bandits skillfully packed trash bags with designer jeans, hoodies, coats, and other items, almost completely emptying one rack. Looking at 80 to 120K worth of stuff. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it sucks. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to see a loss like this. I mean, for them, it's just t-shirts and hoodies, but you know, this stuff right here feeds our family. 
They took more than 40 pairs of jeans with them. The owner expressed fear for his company's security and underlined the need for stronger police presence, wanting to see more cars on patrol in the area. Local stores in the Netherlands, such as the Classy Peacock, were happy on Small Business Saturday. But when two women walked into the store, the day changed. One of them took a risk and carefully tucked product under her clothes while the other stood guard. They asked a casual question regarding a backpack to the employee who, without knowing better, greeted them. Unfortunately, we had a few people that showed up and took advantage of the situation of having lots of guests in the store. The first woman that came in, came in and immediately grabbed merchandise, rolled it up, stashed it in her purse. Uh, she came back because the woman asked her for a backpack, if we had a backpack, so she brings a backpack back to show the lady, stashing more clothes up her shirt. She had an accomplice with her that was in a pink shirt um, that was basically a lookout for her, so when an employee would come their direction, she knew to stop stashing clothes. I wonder exactly the thing my same thing my mother has always told me. How can they put those clothes on their child or put them on themselves and look at themselves in the mirror and think they look nice? How can they feel that that looks nice knowing that they stole those things? They broke character and exited the store as soon as they sensed the staff was approaching, stealing $1,000 worth of clothing, including children's outfits and pants. In a brown and gold Chevrolet Impala, the suspects drove off. A video of three women shoplifting with confidence and full shopping carts of apparel was recorded as they entered a clothing store. They quickly left the area carrying their looted goods, not bothering to try to pay. Chainsaw Charlie strikes again. This would-be lumberjack attempted a daring heist, stuffing a hefty chainsaw down their pants. The only thing more impressive than the size of the loot was their sheer obliviousness as someone down the aisle watched the whole saga unfold. Needless to say, their escape route was a dead end, and Charlie's DIY project ended with a pair of handcuffs instead of a new tool set. A woman was caught on camera robbing a retailer of a $400 leather handbag. She strolled into the store, acted like she was looking through the bags, and struck up a chat with the worker. Taking advantage of the moment when no one was looking, she quickly tucked the purse inside her jacket, acting as though she was a skilled shoplifter. She took the pilfered object and left with a cool head. This video, a spine-tingling moment was caught at Walmart, where the automatic entrance doors continues to open without any visible person passing by. Could this be attributed to a ghostly presence, or perhaps it's simply a sensor malfunction? It's the latest absurd social media prank, and it might just be the most dreadful one to date. Individuals with little regard sneak up on unsuspecting shoppers and place a bucket over their heads. Then the pranksters make a quick escape, leaving their victim bewildered. Did you hit me with a bucket? No. Who's responsible for this? Well, they strike again. This individual joins in on the buckethead challenge, swiftly running off, only to return later after shedding their sweatshirt. And what do they do? They repeat the act. In certain instances, the prankster attempts to confuse their victim further by placing a bucket on their own head. Seriously? What? Why you just put a bucket on my head? I want to put a bucket on my head. Did they? Yeah. 
Lena Clay Monaghan recounts her horrifying experience. I immediately freaked out and started screaming, help, get it, get it off of me. A mother of eight-year-old twins, she describes going into shock and fainting. I was disturbed to see a group of individuals laughing and filming me. Engine 37, a seizure, no target. Resulting in a head injury that required a trip to the emergency room. Police secured surveillance footage, and the distressed mother posted a plea on Facebook in hopes of identifying her assailants. Please help. I was violently attacked. This is far from humorous. Partners in wrongdoing. In this video, a man who initially appears to be a regular customer takes an unexpected turn of events. He allows another customer to exit the premises before instructing the employees to give him the money. Claiming he possesses a weapon, he vaults over the counter and begins extracting cash from the register. The footage captures a man who exits the store discreetly, seemingly holding an item from the store, indicating that he may have just had a stroke of luck. Well, that was quite an embarrassing situation. Witness this man's attempt to rob a liquor store as he enters discreetly, donning a hoodie and gloves. The tension gradually builds as he realizes that his intentions have been discovered. In response, he becomes increasingly agitated, ultimately resorting to leaping over the counter. His efforts to access the cash register prove futile, leading to a rather comical mishap as the machine falls to the ground. It appears the employee had it securely locked. Undeterred, our persistent robber persists in dismantling the machine and disconnecting the register, demonstrating his determination. Meanwhile, another customer enters but hastily retreats upon realizing the predicament he walked into. The robber is seen making a hasty exit as well. Feeling hungry? Prepare for an unexpected twist during an ordinary day at a fast food restaurant. Out of nowhere, a black car forcefully crashes into the establishment, causing glass to shatter inside. The manager swiftly takes action and rushes to assist the car's occupants. It's safe to say it's not the best day for anyone involved, but sometimes life doesn't always go according to plan. As the saying goes, it's advisable to watch where you're headed. In this case, it seems this young boy chose not to heed that advice. At the age of 17, he made the ill-fated decision to steal handbags valued at $18,000 from a Louis Vuitton store an attempt to make a swift getaway. However, his scheme takes an unfortunate turn when he collides with the glass mirror, resulting in a complete knockout. Subsequently, he finds himself in the custody of juvenile authorities. Meanwhile, prosecutors suspect that this boy might be linked to a potential retail theft crime ring, possibly involving other individuals with prior criminal records. It's safe to say his plan was poorly executed. A hero this man fits the bill. Picture yourself out for a routine grocery trip when suddenly you're instructed to vacate the premises. Well, that's the situation these shoppers found themselves in. A fire had broken out and was rapidly spreading, primarily at the rear of the store. In this scene, the police officer can be seen urgently urging people, especially those in the back of the store, to evacuate immediately. Go! Evacuate! We're evacuating from the back of the building. Okay. Everybody head east. Go towards 36. Move now. Leave your stuff. Go. The fire's at the back. Go. Everyone took his announcement seriously due to the seriousness of his tone. As the fire grew more intense, it produced billowing gray smoke. Everybody evacuate the store now. We're evacuating. Get out of the store. Head eastbound. Leave your stuff. Go now. Evacuate Costco now! Head eastbound, leave your carts, go! Everybody evacuate, get out of the store now! Go eastbound! Head towards Denver! Head towards Denver! Let's evacuate now, leave whatever you're doing, go! Fire out back, fire out back! Let's go! Drop whatever you're doing, head east! Boulder County Sheriff's Office, evacuate now! The last remaining foreigner explained that she couldn't leave as she didn't have a vehicle. Displaying compassion, the officer reassured her and agreed to provide transportation in his own vehicle. You don't have a car? No.
one can only imagine the fear that lady must have felt. The diligent restaurant staff, diligently laboring, encountered a disruptive intrusion by three men. They forcefully entered the establishment, leaving no room for delay. One of them swiftly vaults over the counter and proceeds towards the rear of the premises. Meanwhile, the second individual leisurely robs another patron before directing its weapon towards the individual's position behind the counter. The third man functions as a backup. Their execution of the plan is seamless, suggesting a prior familiarity with such actions. They effectively make off with a substantial portion of the money and promptly make their exit from the scene. This man might have made an error. Did he mix up his objectives? Was he originally intending to purchase cement rather than collecting items from the store and stashing them in his bag? Observing his nonchalant departure from the store, as if his actions were entirely lawful, is rather disconcerting. It appears they're facing significant difficulties. Two individuals forcibly enter a gas station, causing extensive damage to the glass door, and their motives seem evident. They immediately make a beeline for the ATM. Despite several minutes of attempts, they prove unsuccessful in their efforts to crack it open. Opting for a different approach, they decide to abscond with the entire machine. That must have posed quite a challenge. In the security camera footage, a man is seen casually taking a bag of chips from the shelf. He then darts to the cash register, snatches a significant amount of cash, and swiftly departs. Another customer made an effort to halt him by attempting to trip him, but this intervention proved unsuccessful. The man made a successful getaway with the money. When it concerns your life, Everything else takes the back seat. In a recent incident, restaurant employees found themselves in a situation where an armed robber menacingly demanded their money. They made the prudent choice to adhere to his demands and wisely refrained from attempting any heroics. I just made a mistake, release me, protests the individual who nonchalantly chose to pilfer some steaks from the store. He attempts to flee towards the exit, but is intercepted by the store employees. They successfully recover the stolen items. However, the man makes one final effort to reclaim one before his complete exit. Approximately 50 people swarmed a Nordstrom department store in California, making off with valuables estimated near $100,000. The video footage of the event captures the culprits, many of whom concealed their identities with hoods and masks, ransacking the store, resulting in toppled shelves and shattered glass. The thieves were observed seizing stacks of high-end merchandise before making their escape. Is it really that effortless? This man enters the store in a relaxed manner. Strolling over to an aisle, right in front of both customers and store employees, he begins placing items into what appears to be a blanket. Witnesses mentioned that he was seen wearing a smile throughout the act, almost as if he were taunting the authorities. Subsequently, he hauls the items out of the store and makes his getaway in a vehicle. Swift police action resulted in a successful arrest. Every case in the city of Hialeah has a priority. We don't tolerate any crimes, but he basically uh, tried to make a mockery out of us. You know, he laughed in our face, laughed in the employee's face, and basically they had no regard. According to the officer, the value of the stolen property adds up to thousands of dollars. This man makes an attempt to steal sunglasses from a well-known store, rather inconspicuously. He exits the store without drawing much attention, but eventually, police initiate a gradual pursuit. Ultimately, one of the officers takes the lead and sprints to apprehend the thief. 
Regrettably, the man was eventually caught, but tragically lost his life as a result of being shot twice by the police. It's unfortunate that the police were merely doing their duties. In the midst of a live news interview, the reporter relayed that police apprehended an individual who tried to leave without paying for $600 worth of merchandise. I'm trying to purchase my stuff. Okay, you, you passed the point of sale station. I didn't press, put anything. I thought it went through. It did not. So I'm trying to bring it back up on my phone. The officer engaged the man, who asserted that his online payment had encountered an issue. Nevertheless, as the interaction continued, the man's demeanor grew increasingly confrontational and he began to place blame on the officer. Okay, I'm supposed to be scared because you're a cop? No, nope. you're not supposed to be scared so because you're a cop. Why not listen to you, you're a cop? What are you going to do, kill me? Actually, you no, put your not. hands on me and walk? Tensions escalated, prompting the officer to employ pepper spray as a means of restraint. Oh, now so you're what? being detained. Detained for what? Okay. Detained for what? Because I have to identify you. And identify me for what? I have one more pay. It did not work. I made a mistake and walked right back to the register. Subsequently, the man was not only arrested, but also faced charges related to stalking and drug use. With the dawn of a new day, fast food employees encountered a fresh challenge. An irate customer was furious over the delay to her order. The woman's frustration boiled over, resulting in a disruptive outburst that included vandalizing the restaurant and overturning containers. Observing the disturbance, other patrons kept the safe distance, while the employees made an effort to pacify the woman and usher her out of the restaurant. It seems we've stumbled upon a bike thief. In this scenario, a man casually selects a bicycle from the store's display area and swiftly makes his exit, leaving the customers in a state of astonishment. However, onlookers promptly intervene, apprehending and challenging him. Did these individuals believe it was acceptable for women to engage in theft? In the surveillance footage, three men disguised as women were apprehended while calmly pilfering items. They nonchalantly stashed the stolen goods in their handbags, seemingly unconcerned about the illegality of their actions. They executed their operations swiftly and with precision. However, when they reached the exit, security personnel pursued them. In a bid to evade capture, they deployed pepper spray on the security guard and hastily made their getaway. If they're thieving, they're thieving in skirts or in pants one way or the other. Nevertheless, police later tracked them down and placed them under arrest. A collective of individuals entered a retail store and swiftly made off with an entire inventory of high-end handbags valued at over $90,000. In a mere 24 seconds, they seized 48 bags and swiftly left the premises. Subsequently, it came to light that one of the culprits had visited the store earlier, posing as a customer inquiring about shoes, a likely ploy to divert the attention of the employees. When she went into the store, she asked about a pair of shoes and when the, uh, the clerk went to get those shoes, uh, the four co-conspirators rushed in. During that pursuit, the Durango uh, uh, traveled uh, at speeds of up to 100 miles an hour. They were swerving into the on-coming on, uh, lanes of traffic in an attempt to get away. And uh, the East Hampton Village Police Department terminated the uh, pursuit at that time because of the, uh, the clear danger to the public. Fortunately, police apprehended the majority of the thieves though one remains evasive and at large. During the late hours of the night, a pair of individuals unlawfully entered a restaurant and proceeded directly to the cash register, where they absconded with money. With no one present to hinder their actions, they leisurely executed their theft and exited discreetly, avoiding detection by the surveillance cameras. Nevertheless, they inexplicably revisited the establishment a little later, only to find themselves caught in the midst of a separate robbery. During this encounter, they were forcibly subdued, causing them to glance towards the surveillance camera, which rendered their identification a straightforward matter. How much laundry needed to be done? A man and a woman were apprehended for shoplifting at a grocery store as they casually pushed shopping carts filled with merchandise towards the exit. They made no attempt to pay for the products and exhibited no intention to do so. Both the police and the security personnel were taken by surprise, but acted swiftly. They halted the woman's cart, but she remained stubborn and refused to surrender the items. The man clung to the container of detergent and wouldn't release it, even when the officers tried to take it from him, creating a somewhat amusing scene.
They had a car strategically positioned near the exit for an easy getaway with the stolen goods. Their goal was to steal detergent and cleaning supplies valued at over $600. They loaded the merchandise into a car and departed. But the man was later apprehended by the police. It's a common belief that the most perilous individuals are those we trust. In this instance, a restaurant staff member completely lost his composure and raised his voice at a female colleague, displaying entirely unacceptable behavior. He not only overstepped his boundaries, but also issued threats regarding her phone. You mess up my phone. I'm not gonna mess up your phone. You can stop recording me because you do not have my permission to record me and I will sue you for it. His explosive outbursts were triggered by the fact that the woman had spent an extended period of time in the restroom. She attempted to clarify that she was pregnant, but he rudely disregarded her explanation. That's because I'm, pre I'm pregnant, Mister. A pregnancy is not an excuse. Despite the man's threat to take legal action, the woman wisely decided to document the incident for her own safety. I'm about to put all this, all this crap on Facebook. Put it on Facebook, and I swear to God, I'm about I to will have your ass in jail. To make matters more uncomfortable, this altercation occurred in front of other customers, putting them in an awkward position. Following numerous months of recurring thefts, Florida police eventually apprehended the shoplifters. They utilized tracking technology to pinpoint the presence of two women within the store. The police maintained a watchful presence outside the store, monitoring the women via surveillance footage. Both subjects have entered the vehicle. The vehicle is moving. Subsequently, as the women exited the parking lot, an unmarked police vehicle swiftly approached them. Hey, they coming, they coming. This sudden encounter caused the women to become anxious, but they were subsequently transported to the nearest police station. During a thorough search, the police discovered that the women stole numerous bottles of perfume. I want to get one thing straight with you, okay? Understand, if you're going to cooperate with us you're going to, and we're going to help you, then you got to fully co cooperate. And if you don't want to do that, you need to tell me now because I don't want to waste my time, you know what I'm saying? This led the authorities to initiate a line of questioning aimed at unveiling information about the remainder of their criminal associates. Two men entered a clothing store forcefully, promptly helping themselves to clothing from the aisles. Susan, a group of 10 people walking by a store and coming up with an idea to stay in it. The noteworthy aspect here is that they made no attempt to conceal their identities, opting to wear ordinary attire and foregoing masks. How brave. In a matter of seconds, they absconded with merchandise exceeding a value of $30,000 and hastily exited the store. The objective was not to confront anybody, it was to grab as much product as they could in the shortest time frame they had and exit the store. We're depending on, on some video footage from, from inside the store and outside the store to try to help us identify who the offenders are. No store employees made any effort to intervene. Instead, law enforcement was summoned. Regrettably, the group evaded capture by the police before they could be apprehended. A woman entered a store with a bewildered demeanor making a beeline for the electronics. She swiftly stocked her cart with an assortment of electronic items, engaging in a conversation with one of the employees. Given that the employees had previously observed her engaging in theft, they maintained a vigilant watch over her. She was very a blatant thief. You know, she clearly had no regard for people's belongings or the fact that she was stealing. She knew she was stealing and that was her intent. And so what happened actually in the store was that this woman walks in nonchalantly and she goes to the electronics section and she starts loading up the shopping cart and once she has all the electronics she wants she just walks right back out it soon became evident that the woman planned to steal again as she headed towards the exit with the merchandise in her cart and drove off and what we learn later during the investigation is that she's known to target employees she's a notorious thief um, they have had several encounters with her they attempt to do a traffic stop she decides to flee. The employee was perplexed, but promptly notified the police. Count one is grand theft auto. Count two is petty theft. Fortunately, the store was equipped with advanced security cameras, enabling the police to swiftly apprehend the thief shortly after the incident unfolded. This video is quite disconcerting. It depicts a man who appears to be hanging near the escalator, almost swinging in midair. Additionally, he is observed approaching other customers and closely following them near the escalator. 
Authorities received a complaint and arrived promptly, but the harm had already been inflicted. The man transitioned into a genuine assailant, as evidenced by the severely injured customer lying on the floor. Ultimately, they did capture the man. It's chilling to think how much worse the situation could have become had they arrived only slightly later. A woman and her companion entered a store, behaving like regular customers. They examined some hoodies and subsequently, the woman requested an employee to show her a locked purse. While the employee was in the process of retrieving the requested purse, the woman took it upon herself to pick up another one, even though she had been instructed to inspect only one at a time. Strangely, instead of returning one of the purses, she calmly made her way towards the exit with both in her possession. When the employee noticed the theft and attempted to intervene, she was met with resistance and ended up being pepper sprayed in the eye. Two people walked in the store together. The one that was wearing the Gap shirt, uh, she's our suspect. If anybody has any information on her, we're asking that they call our department and uh, let us know who that is. Uh, if someone recognizes the person that she was with, we would love to speak to her. Maybe she witnessed something. We never want anybody, any employee, to ever try to stop someone, ever try to get involved in any way. The way you should get involved is by being our eyes and ears. The woman successfully fled the scene, leaving the injured employee in pain, necessitating her transportation to the hospital. The mass robbery at a high-end boutique created quite a commotion. Surveillance footage reveals approximately 20 to 30 individuals ransacking the store. They systematically loaded the goods into over 20 awaiting vehicles and hastily departed. The robbers appeared to be in a hurry, visibly running with their arms full of stolen goods. The store experienced such a substantial loss that they offered a $50,000 reward for any information regarding the culprits. The situation escalated to the point where that $50,000 was extended for the apprehension of the suspects. Just ponder the immense extent of damage the store must have incurred. It appears that fate took an unfavorable turn for these robbers. Although their actions were far from justifiable, their good fortune had come to an end. Three individuals, two women and a man, stole sunglasses worth a substantial sum. However, the employee's response was both astute and rather entertaining. He promptly vacated the store and secured the doors, ensnaring the robbers inside. Despite their efforts to flee, the locked doors thwarted their escape. The robbers grew increasingly frustrated and resorted to verbally confronting the employee, but he remained resolute, insisting that they return the stolen sunglasses. Regrettably, they remained uncooperative, even attempting to break through the door and employing a fire extinguisher, but their endeavors proved futile. To put the sunglasses back, which they did not want to do. They were just trying to use the fire extinguisher to try to break the door. And the other bystanders would say, no, 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 don't, don't let them out. Consequently, the robbers found themselves confined within a cloud of carbon dioxide, and the authorities were promptly alerted. It's certainly comforting to know that the robbers were apprehended. What a silly way to get caught. The concerned customers calmly described how they had discovered worms in their meal. There's three freaking worms in there, man. Although the man conveys his dissatisfaction, the manager advises him not to make a scene. I apologize, sir. I really do apologize. This isn't my store. The manager even warned them that they would be asked to leave if they didn't comply. Nevertheless, the man remained resolute and informed her that he would contact the police. If you're hey, making I'll, a scene, I'm going to make you leave without I'll, I'll call the cops and, and tell them what kind of food you guys are serving. This clearly serves as an instance of subpar customer service. A pair of burglars entered a store, but the employee grew wary of one of them and promptly secured the doors. The dubious individuals picked up a container of goods and tried to leave, only to discover that the doors were locked. In an attempt to deceive, he feigned an intention to make a purchase as he advanced towards the counter. I think people are desperate. It's desperation, and they just get crazy. Well, that's stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know how, what their IQ is. That's what I mean by desperation. They don't think. They just do. However, his companion was more effective, successfully swiping valuable merchandise before both of them made their hasty escape. The police are currently engaged in efforts to locate the robbers. In the midst of an armed robbery, one of the employees demonstrated cleverness and quick reflexes. They effectively trapped the robbers inside the store by securing the front gate. In an attempt to escape, one of the robbers made an effort to access the ceiling but failed. 
As the realization that the police had been summoned dawned on the robbers, panic set in. Regrettably, even though the call had been placed, they failed to arrive in a timely manner. During that period, the robbers broke free using tools and fled the scene. The officers finally reached the location 18 minutes after the incident had occurred, but it was too late, as the store had already been ransacked. Shoplifting, as you can imagine, is not a priority one call. The word is used. At that point, within 11 seconds, a car is dispatched. The police issued an apology, citing an inappropriate registration of the phone call, but the undeniable truth remains that the store owner endured severe repercussions as a result of the robbery. Three burglars, consisting of two women and a man, made their way into a jewelry store and executed their plan with finesse. They expressed a desire to view a diamond ring, pretending it was intended as a gift. They just wanted to buy a watch and a diamond ring. The trio engaged in extended conversation, skillfully diverting the owner's attention. They were talking to each other very loud, you know, their hands were everywhere. They then requested a wrapping sheet to encase the ring. Seizing the opportunity, as the owner turned to fetch the sheet, one of the women deftly removed the ring, closed the box, and wrapped it. And they put it in the bag, they wrapped it, they stapled it, and they said, hold on this thousand dollars because we have thirty thousand, we're gonna go get another ten thousand credit card. My mistake, you know. I shouldn't have left it right there. It's a lesson learned. Yes, you can't just trust anybody, you know. You have to be careful. Prior to their departure, the robbers informed the owner that they needed to withdraw money from an ATM and promptly exited the store, never to return. A video depicts a restaurant manager retrieving a discarded loaf of bread from the garbage and subsequently offering it to customers, as if it were freshly baked. A patron recorded this act and voiced his repulsion towards the manager's actions. This incident underscores the unhygienic practices occasionally linked to fast food establishments, potentially endangering public health. The prevailing notion is that paranormal events typically occur in deserted or enclosed locations. However, this restaurant stands as an anomaly. Security cameras have documented a certain level of activity. While it wasn't anything extravagant, such as levitating furniture, the recording does reveal a shadow shifting along the floor. What adds an extra layer of eeriness is, the restaurant was devoid of people when the video was captured. This video showcases a comical attempt at theft. Two women enter a store, browse for their desired items, amassing a total value of approximately $200. They went to the checkout counter to request the bill. The employee then places the selected items in a bag and informs them of the total cost. However, one of the women insists on holding the bag before making payment, arousing suspicion. Consequently, the employee discreetly employs technology to lock the store's doors. As one of the women attempts to exit with the bag, her companion pretends to complete the purchase. Realizing that the doors are now locked, they are left in a predicament. Eventually, the employee intervenes, reclaiming the bag and its contents, and returning them to their original location behind the counter. Finally, the employee unlocks the doors, permitting the women to leave. A man found himself in police custody for his refusal to relinquish an unpaid sandwich. This incident happened after the store had already closed for the day. The man forced his way into the establishment and began to wander inside. Police arrived, and upon their confrontation with the man, they discovered him in an act of consuming the sandwich. Despite numerous appeals for him to vacate the premises, the man persisted in his refusal, leading to his arrest on theft charges. His stubbornness prompted the police to employ pepper spray before ultimately taking him into custody. 
I wonder if the pepper spray made the sandwich taste different. An individual attempted to exit a store with items he hadn't paid for. When confronted by the others, he brandished a weapon, leaving them with no alternative but to desist. The man successfully escaped with merchandise valued over $100. It appears that theft is as straightforward as placing store items in your backpack. In this particular case, the security guard refrained from preventing the man from taking the items, opting instead to request his departure. Hey, you need to go, man. You need to leave the store. Yo. Yo, 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 you gotta go, gotta go, bro, gotta go. Leave the store, man. Leave the store, you got enough. Trade me, department. Need to go, need to go, need to go. Hey, you need to leave, man. You need to leave. Oh, my God. Come on, guy. I'm following you. Look at me. Hey, you need to go, you need to go man. Oh my God. The man's conduct implies a sense of mockery towards others and a complete disregard for adhering to rules. The typical association between fast food and healthiness is disrupted in this video. A staff member is seen using a device to eliminate mosquitoes and insects. But the disconcerting aspect is that this action occurs directly above the food. We have made an inspection and we have given recommendation at the facility to get professional terminations. This incident reveals the unsanitary conditions that likely prevailed in the establishment, leading to the worker's termination by the health department. Police officers received a call regarding a secluded area of an abandoned mall. The event was captured on their body cameras, revealing their adeptness and self-assuredness. Clearly, they were highly trained and methodical in their approach, proceeding with prudence and precision, despite being uncertain about what lay ahead. What? My son is your son! Okay, well, we gotta go deal with business. I've got the uh, black hoodie with a hood up so far. Black hoodie with a hood up is what we're looking for so far. I got the left side because I'm a lefty hand. Where's the, what's the, um... Another caller said that there was 43 is in Oshkosh, too. We can check that also. Where'd the shots come from? Okay, the main mall. All right. Somebody's open that, that door. We gotta get through. We gotta get through. Thank you. The mall's Take that off. I can't hear you. The guy had the sweater. He went this way, and he went up. We're getting a description from one of the... Um... Uh, so we've got officers inside. First floor, second floor, we're looking for a victim. Alright, Coop, we'll go. you can check that out. Also, yeah, we'll go, yeah. That's one we're, uh... I'm with, I'm with you. One of the witnesses said he uh, came to the second floor and disappeared in front of Macy's. So, I don't know if he's a victim or a shooter. I think you have, uh, Westerville call and let him know. Go upstairs, maybe? Yeah, we're on camera. I don't know where we'll all do the house is. Did somebody stop over to Good Energy? We've got people, employees, that are hiding in the bathroom over there. Ultimately, they were informed that it was a simulated exercise, with people concealed in the restrooms. Despite the high-stakes nature of the situation, the officers handled it flawlessly. A fast food employee delivered an order to a customer's vehicle, only to be faced with a rude rejection. The customer complained about a wait exceeding 20 minutes and demanded complimentary items. Sorry, do you know that we've been waiting like 25 minutes for this food? Huh? We've waited like 25 minutes for this food. Initially taken aback, the worker chuckled it off and urged the customer to accept the food, but their rudeness persisted, leading to another refusal. I'm new employees. No, but like, no, no, but we expect something free. Yeah, here, the food please. for free or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, give yeah. us some free food. <laughs> the worker, who was relatively new, explained that he lacked the authority to provide the free items. In response, the customers still declined to accept the food. What do you think this is? <laughs> 30. <laughs> Take your food, please. I don't have time. I don't have time. Are you okay? Growing increasingly frustrated, the worker resorted to consuming the food in front of them and even tossed some into their car. Uh, McDonald's. UK McDonald's. This is, this is where Corona happened. 
you want your burger? You want your burger? Collect me. Collect me. I don't care. Collect me. Collect me. <laughs> What's your perspective on this? Did the worker go too far, or was their reaction justified? A man was found concealed within a store, prompting the authorities to be alerted. They used a drone to ascertain the man's identity. Initially, the man was asleep, but upon waking, he began hurling pillows at the drone. The officers then urged him to descend, and upon compliance, they took him into custody. The lingering query is how long the man had been residing within the store. It's evident that this man is exasperated with the unwelcome attention he received due to his height. Regrettably, he chose to vent his frustration on the female staff at a local bagel store. He raised his voice and expressed discontent about how women had teased him for his five-foot stature, even though none of the staff had engaged in such behavior. Why is it okay for women to say, oh, you're five feet on dating sites? You should be That's okay? Who said that to you here? Nobody. Women in general have said it on dating sites. You think I'm making a Dude, you want to step outside? You want to step outside? Huh? I'm not scared. His conduct was demeaning and unpleasant. Although some of the customers found it somewhat amusing when he began to threaten another man, the situation escalated, leading to the man being pushed to the ground, which put a halt on his aggressive behavior. In a subsequent interview, he portrayed himself as the victim and disparaged the interviewer. What do you mean take it out and you're acting like I committed mass shooting or something? That guy twice my size that women love, the bullies, attacked me. You know what? I, I don't really, no offense, I don't really like you that much, so this interview's over. It's important to note that he's had similar outbursts that were recorded and shared on social media. Come in here to get a coffee and this jackass right here asks me what is my height? Dragging on a digit, right? And you threaten to punch a guy that's half your size? Let's hope he can find more constructive and positive ways to cope with his frustrations. The smallest dog barks the loudest. It appears that this individual momentarily forgot that he was a fugitive on the lam. The store employee promptly identified him when he made a purchase and verified his identity. This man had a history of 11 arrests and a multitude of other charges. The employee promptly alerted the authorities about his whereabouts. The man was a prime suspect in the tragic loss of a 24-year-old woman's life, and as such, he featured prominently on a comprehensive wanted list. I think people are in positions that can affect change, and I hope that they get the message that what they're doing right now is not the right solution. Thanks to the vigilance of this diligent worker, the man was eventually apprehended by the police. It's an improbable, yet not entirely inconceivable situation. In a video clip, a bear is seen entering a convenience store, behaving with an unexpected calm and ease, much like any regular customer. Hey! Stop! Hey! Shh! Shh! Hey! Shh! 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 Get out! Get out! Nevertheless, the store employee starts to panic and eventually breaks down in tears while repeatedly yelling at the bear to depart. Unfortunately, her efforts appear to have no impact on the bear. I mean, bears don't understand English, after all, store. A vehicle collided with the store at high velocity, resulting in significant damage. Regrettably, one of the customers sustained injuries during the incident. Thankfully, both the driver and the injured customer were transported to the hospital and their injuries were determined to be non-life-threatening. Remarkably, the customer did not suffer any major injuries. It's distressing to discover that the car crash was not an unintended occurrence and the driver now faces charges totaling over $1,000. Let's hope for a safer road ahead of everyone. A shoplifter was apprehended red-handed by a courageous customer who reclaimed the clothing the thief was trying to steal. I text my store manager, I said, we are about to get robbed. And she's like, what? I was shaking, I was scared. I'm like, oh my God, till now I'm scared to close. I walked to the floor, I said, um, hi, you guys need help? You need help? And he said, um, no, I'm fine, I'm just looking.
the thief made an initial exit attempt, but the door was secured by advanced security technology. At this time, he was trying to knock at the door, trying to open the door, kick at, kick at the door. Leading to his frustration and his exasperation, the man attempted to force the door open and vociferously voiced his discontent at the store's employees. Eventually, he succeeded in leaving the store. That's when he walked toward me and pushed me on the floor and then grabbed the stuff. And, you know. Nonetheless, he circled back to the store and absconded with the clothing, ultimately achieving his primary objective of the theft, despite the initial setback. This video captures a smash-and-grab incident in progress. Observe as a man forcefully shatters the glass of a T-Mobile store in Silver Spring, Maryland. He strikes a display stand. detaching the phones from their security cords and then gathers the phones from the ground before making a swift escape through the shattered window. Detectives have provided a description of the suspect, noting that he was wearing a black sling bag, a black hoodie, black pants, and black shoes. An incentive of up to $10,000 is being offered for any information that results in his arrest. Pandemonium unfolded at Kohl's tonight. A driver rammed their vehicle into the store, striking three individuals, then swiftly reversed and fled, sparking a pursuit. According to the Huntington Beach Police Department, the situation could have been far more dire, but thankfully, the three individuals in the hospital have non-life-threatening injuries. That's the positive news. The aftermath of the incident is readily apparent as the vehicle plowed into the Kohl's Sephora store located at the Bellaterra Shopping Center in Huntington Beach, just off the 405 freeway. We have some ground-level footage to show you a different angle that illustrates the extensive damage around the store. Additionally, we have video footage captured earlier when the fire department was still present at the scene. Following the initial crash into the store, the driver fled in a red truck prompting a brief pursuit when they attempted to escape down Beach Boulevard. It was during this pursuit that the Huntington Beach police executed a pit maneuver to swiftly bring the individual to justice and prevent further harm. The truck was spun around and collided with a light pole. The sole occupant of the vehicle is now in custody, facing suspicion of driving under the influence and subsequent arrest. It's worth noting, as per the Huntington Beach PD, that while this incident caused significant property damage, there were no life-threatening injuries. The situation had the potential to be far more severe at Cole Sephora, as evident from the images of shattered glass and debris in the front of the store, along with the presence of numerous police cars and fire trucks in the parking lot. A man enters a Target and moves to the bedding department, where he places items in a shopping cart. Shortly after, he attempts to return these items for cash. Irvine police investigators have revealed that this thief has been targeting multiple stores throughout Orange County, California. And since they asked him about the property and he said that the reason he had so many sheets is because he was running an Airbnb. Um, so definitely suspicious if a person is returning multiple items of the same thing. Among the significant items he focused on are Dyson vacuums and Ninja knife sets. At the register, he informs the store employees that the item he's returning were part of a gift registry. Detectives report that he leans over the electronics counter, snatches an iPad, and swiftly makes his escape from the store. It's estimated that he's robbed these stores at least 25 times, amassing approximately $20,000 worth of stolen goods. Authorities are seeking the assistance of the public in identifying these individuals. Following the tragic killing of George Floyd by the police, the United States witnessed a surge of collective outrage and lament over the incident. Protests erupted across the nation, and many of them escalated into violent confrontations. In one such protest held in Minnesota, individuals started looting a nearby target. The footage resembles a scene reminiscent of a post-apocalyptic movie, where virtually all the items on the shelves had been taken. People were seen rushing in and out of the store, hastily acquiring goods. The chaotic situation escalated as a sizable fire was ignited, and some individuals resorted to carrying firearms to safeguard themselves. The target bore the brunt of the riot, being entirely emptied of its inventory during the unrest.
In this video, it was this guy's second attempt to rob this gas station, but things didn't go as he expected. As the man attempted to steal a 12-pack of beer, the employee wisely locked him in the store and notified the authorities. The man had a variety of ways to try and escape, but none of them worked. I lock him inside and then he tried to break left door, right door, left door, right door and he said, oh guy, you got me today, you got me today. And last week he come to steal beer and broke the door and he went out. And two, I called police. The police can't find him. This guy is terrible. It's terrible. Man. A man who was armed and wearing a mask is seen entering Metro PCS and makes his way right to the counter in this CCTV footage. When the employee saw the firearm, he quietly and slowly stepped aside. After removing the money from the counter, the person hastily fled the area. In this disturbing footage, we see a woman who is behaving like a zombie with her bizarre movements and inability to respond. Lean with it, rock with it. The zombies. Smile for the camera. Say hi. Say hi. Oh, she can't even respond. Is she a zombie? Or maybe she's just drunk. Let me know what you think. Five people planned a methodical break-in at a Kelso warehouse under the cover of darkness. They created an opening in the wall that led to the section where the cannabis flowers were cultivated by taking advantage of a structural weakness in the building. After breaking in, the robbers quickly cleared out a whole room and spent over two hours carefully packing away the buds. It would have been our first fall crop. Um, it would have been getting trimmed up and packaged this week. Um, it's. It's a huge hit financially for our business, and I'm hoping that we'll make it through this. There was an alert system in place, but the heist still happened. Nevertheless, the robbers were able to escape unnoticed since the motion detectors were unable to sound the alarm. Very surreal feeling, uh, sick to my stomach. Couldn't believe it actually happened. We work really hard. It's, it's our livelihood to have someone come take it. The company is in shock over the significant loss of $250,000 worth of loot that was supposed to be sold later that day. It's terrible enough when citizens draw weapons on other citizens, but can you fathom having the audacity to shoot at a police officer? Nevertheless, that's precisely what transpired on April 19, 2022, when members of the Pinella Park Police Department responded to a nearby Circle K due to complaints of a domestic dispute. In the video, an officer can be seen pulling up to the gas station and circling the back of a vehicle, only to have someone shoot at him after they opened the rear door. After taking a blow to the bicep, the officer falls to the ground and demands assistance. After entering the business, the gunman, later identified as Calman Brockington, demands that a random client give him his keys. When another policeman arrives and tries to confront him, they exchange bullets. He then rushes to that person's car. However, Brockington eventually gets away under the motorway. Fortunately, he didn't get very far before deputies found him and took him into custody. As Florida deputies made an arrest, 7-Eleven employees and customers gathered in the rear of the store for safety. A driver allegedly escaped during a traffic stop and led the Volusa Sheriff's Office on a low-speed pursuit. 
Silver Saturn SUV with a headlight out. Copy. The offender was also being pursued by two other police agencies, one of which is using stop sticks. He drove around the stop sticks. I'm still behind him. We're pulling into the 7-Eleven. Despite the driver's refusal to get out of the car, authorities said they came up with a method to free him. Back glass only. Back glass only. Okay, we're not, we're, we're dumping it full of OC pepper spray. Okay, so all we're doing is moving up to break Correct. that back window. Officers cracked the rear glass of the suspect's car as they slowly got closer. Stop freaking! Let's get, let's back off, let's back off. Come on, back out. Let's go. The suspect was forced out with pepper spray. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Police report that there was no incident during the arrest. Two counts of resisting an officer without using force and running away from police was brought against the subject. At a gas stop in SoCal, a man with a weapon emerged. The store clerk was frightened and hurriedly jumped over the counter to the other side in search of safety. Money flew from the cash register in a flurry of action, and the burglar quickly gathered what he could before running away. Due to allegations that they robbed a Popeye's restaurant, this trio is being sought after and made fun of. This footage, which the Baymont police in Texas released, showed three armed stooges who they claimed slipped and slid into a Popeye's. It appears that the suspects went to the back of the establishment and removed items out of the safe, even though the police were unable to observe what the suspects took. The three people, who are currently going by the names Larry, Curly, and Moe, are wanted by the police. Investigators are hopeful that someone can identify them based on their distinctive apparel, even though their faces are hidden. The tumble was undoubtedly unpleasant, but it wasn't nearly as painful to this man who broke into a Popeyes in Jacksonville some years ago, according to Florida police. Before attempting to pry open the registers, he appears to require some time to recover from the crash.